Bessie, our choir director, his parents are missionaries. He was born in China. And uh, we supported them very early in the 90s and have been supporting them ever since. Uh, they're in uh, Ohio now and still uh, on the missions trail. Jesse's praying about God's will for his life, uh, where the Lord wants him to go. And so you pray for him if you will. Now, as I said, we'll probably follow this schedule uh, throughout this month, and then we'll wait and see just exactly uh, what we need to do uh, a little bit later on. So be much in prayer. No services tonight, but Wednesday evening at 7, and next Sunday at 10.30 again, and we'll continue to move forward. Now, with your Bible open in the book of Ruth, chapter 2, and then we'll read to you in a few moments several other verses that I want to read to you that goes right along with the subject I want to bring to you today. Decisions that determine our destiny. Decisions that determine our destiny. You made a lot of decisions last week, some of them not very important, some of them important. But when you're dealing with eternity, and when you're dealing with things that uh, have to do with God and heaven and hell, they're very, very important. And we need to understand that when we make decisions, there's an effect. And then as we go down through our life, we'll find out that those decisions followed us down through life many, many times. Now, in the book of Ruth, uh, which most ladies uh, really love the book of Ruth, and I do too, because it uh, talks about how far away a person can get from God and how God can still use that individual. And uh, ladies, uh, you rejoice in the fact that God can use women in a mighty way. I thank the Lord for my wife. She's been my wife now for 50-something years, and notice I said 50-something. I don't want to make a mistake and say the wrong, the wrong thing, <clears throat> even though I'm not afraid. <clears throat> and uh, so, uh, anyway, this young lady made the right decision. She was going in a wrong vein, but she made the right decision that brought her tremendous blessings. Let me just read to you a few passages in chapter 2, uh, beginning in verse 1. Now Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth of the family of Imelec. His name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabitess, now remember, she's a Moabitess. Uh, she's not a Jew. She's not in the family of grace, the family of God. Uh, and so here is this Moabitess. Said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, go, my daughter. God works in strange ways. He takes this outcast, this pagan woman, brings her to the right people, the right man to become her husband, it changes her life, and her story is recorded down through history as one of the great ladies of the Bible, and we don't have time to go into all of that. In verse 3, and she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, whose was the kindred of Imelech. That's not an accident this happened. You do understand that, don't you? It looks like it's saying here, well, she just happened to be there. No, God was leading every step of the way. You see, God wants to lead you, and he wants to direct me. I thank God for the leading of the Lord. It's kept me out of a lot of trouble, difficulties, heartaches by letting him lead me and guide me and direct me. Now I'll let you read the rest of that story for yourself. But the book of Ruth talks about a woman who has a warning and she gets that warning, receives it, and instead of her living a life of misery, she married the right man at the right time and God used her and she's still mentioned today. You see, God's faithful in chastening his children, but he's also faithful in guiding his children. And he's guiding this lady along to a place where she'll meet a wonderful man 
And God uses her in a wonderful way. Now, Boaz and this whole story indicates the Old Testament idea of a kinsman redeemer. A kinsman redeemer was someone that had the power to buy back some land that was lost in a family or could buy back an individual or a family. So you get that idea. Now, here's what the book of Ruth's about as far as our world is concerned. When I was born and reached the age of accountability, I was in sin, separated from God. But there came into my life a kinsman redeemer. That kinsman redeemer is the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of him, now I'm going to heaven. You get the idea? And that's what this whole thing is about. Now, the book of Ruth, in chapter 1, you have testing. God always tests his children to bring out the best in us. And this thing that's going on right now, I think God's using it to test us as the children of God. But not only to test us, but to bring out the best in us. God never tests you to bring out the worst in you. He tests you to bring out the best in you. You got that? And I want to be the best I can be for the Lord. Now, I'm human. I fail, and you will fail. And then there's the chastening, the testing, the chastening, and it'll come. But the Lord's using that chastening to bring you closer to him. Then there's confession, and that's what this lady did, and then there is the blessing. Now, I want to read to you some verses out of the scripture. Now, remember we're talking about decisions that determine our destiny. We're talking about something very important here. Psalm 89 verse 47, remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? Hosea 10 and verse 12, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your foul ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Romans 13 11, and that knowing the time that it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Ephesians 4.15, But speaking the truth in love, may grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Colossians 4.5, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Decision, de decisions uh, that's going to determine our destiny. Let's pray, if you will, please, and let's stand as we pray, and then you may be seated, and we'll look into the scriptures. I'm going to ask Brother Mike Powell, if he will, uh, to lead us uh, as we pray. <clears throat> Amen. You may be seated. You do not know, and I do not know, in the next hour, we may make decisions that will change our life forever, for good or for bad. And therefore, we need to make sure that we're in the scriptures, that we're on our knees in prayer, and we're letting God lead us and guide us and direct us. I look back over my life, and I see some of the decisions I made that was not good. And I had to repent in dust and ashes, and it affected me down through my days. But then I remember some decisions that I made that I thank God for. I'll never forget the day that I was sitting in the center of Tennessee Temple University, and I was deciding whether I was going to stay or whether I was going to go. You know the story. 
and I was a farm boy. I wasn't used to city life. I was used to getting up and going out to the field and to the barn and that kind of thing. And I get down to this university where all the guys dress in suits and the young ladies are dressed so nicely, educated, studying for this and that and the other thing. And they'd talk about, uh, use different words that I had never heard of. And I thought, well, maybe it'd be best for me just to go back home, work on the farm, and go to Pleasantdale and work down there at our little country church. I was faced with a decision. <clears throat> and I said, well, I think I'm going to go home. I got up from the bench. Now, this was right in the middle of campus. I got up off the bench, and I looked up, and there was a sign there in the middle of campus, and it said this, the test of what you are is the test of what it takes to make you quit. The test of what you are is a test of what it takes to make you quit. And I said, I'm not a quitter. I got my Bible, I got my briefcase, and I walked to class. Dr. Robert Burdett was the teacher. It was filled with young men who were uh, going to, for training as a pastor. And because I made that decision, it changed my life. And you're going to be faced with decisions that can change your life. But I want it to change your life and mine for the better. Now, I want you to think with me about this matter of decisions. We're free to choose. Did you know God made you free to choose? You can choose him or you can reject him. I'm glad that he did, aren't you? I'm glad that he said to you and said to me, there's heaven and there's hell. You have the choice. If you want to come to me, I'll see it. See to it that if you repent, you'll live with me in that wonderful city, in that beautiful place forever and ever. You'll enjoy all the amenities of heaven, all the amenities of the new earth. You'll be with your family there that are born again, or you can reject me and spend eternity in the lake of fire. That's what my Bible says, and I believe it. So we're free to choose. You're free to choose. As a Christian, you're free to choose. As an unsaved man or woman, you're free to choose. But listen to this. You are not free not to choose. You've got to make a choice. You've got to make a choice, but then you live with those choices. Amen? You live with those choices. Go through the New Testament. All the men, all the women that Jesus confronted with salvation, those that made wise choices are in heaven with him today. Those that made foolish choices are still spending eternity in the lake of fire. And then listen to this very carefully. I wrote this down. You are not free to choose the consequences of your choices. Let that sink in a minute. Listen, you're not free to choose the consequences of your choices. Once you make that choice, the consequences are going to come, whether they're good or whether they are bad. Remember what the rich man said? Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But he made a choice, and he had to live with it. You see, we have a lot of choices to make. Let's make sure we make the right choice. Let me give you three or four thoughts this morning concerning this important thing of making decisions and they will change our destiny in so many ways. Number one, time is precious for it's God-given. Time is precious for it's God-given. Did you know that a million years ago, God knew that you would be in this church building this morning? Did you know that nothing takes him by surprise? The Bible says he lives in the eternal present, past, present, and future. The eternal present. And God chose to create the earth. Can you imagine that? That one time there was nothing. Absolutely nothing out there. No sun, no moon, nothing out there. And the Bible said, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God has made choices, and we have this earth that we live on, and he placed man here. And do you know what God's design and plan for man was? That they take care of the earth, that they farm it, that they till it, that they enjoy it. And he was going to give them the best of everything. But he gave them a choice. You can choose to follow me, and I'll bless you. 
If you want to reject me, go ahead and you'll suffer the consequences. Time, it's precious because it is God-given. You're here today because God allowed you to be here. God uh, gave this day to you and me so that we could use it for his glory and for his honor. Brother Jesse sings. Music is his love. And God's given him that gift and he uses it for the glory of God. I'm glad that he's here. We have teachers that God has gifted to do just that. And I'm glad that the Lord has given us men and women just for those specific reasons to help us grow in grace and truth and the uh, glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible indicates that time is fleeting. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Amen? You don't know what will happen tomorrow. I do not know what will happen tomorrow. And uh, I can remember one time as I was going to Chattanooga and I was driving my car down the road going to uh, Tennessee Temple and I was thinking as I was driving, I need to get there, I need to get to my class and so forth and so on and just as happy as could be. I get into Red Bank and I just get into Red Bank and here's this car runs right in front of me, head on. No school that day. Had to worry about getting my car fixed, getting back home, and I was upset. So upset. And I was just, the, the man that came by to help out, uh, probably I think he was, for sure he was a Christian, and I was thinking, I was making some comments, and he said, young man, just thank God you're still alive. Amen? Just thank God you're still alive. Now, I'm talking about time, the matter of time. It's precious because it's God-given. Let's not waste it. Let's not lose it. Because if you lose opportunities, sometimes you've lost an opportunity of a lifetime. You've lost it forever. Amen? And I'm saying to you this morning on this Mother's Day, and it's a wonderful day, and I thank God you're here. Good to see old friends here, and good to see you here. And I believe as the days go by, uh, we'll be back to where we were before. But time is precious for it's God-given. Time is precious, number two. Now think with me. Time is precious for every hour is frighted with opportunity. Think about this. Every hour you live, God gives you an opportunity to praise him. God gives you an opportunity to glorify him. God gives you an opportunity to study and to put into your mind and into your thoughts things that will help serve him and bring others to the Lord Jesus Christ. I think about our church. Think about the people that are here that we couldn't do without. Uh, they fit into this church. They're performing uh, something for the glory of God, and we need them, and I'm glad of that, aren't you? And so when we wake up, we need to realize that God has placed us here because he wants us to take advantage of every opportunity. Now, every hour we can be a blessing to somebody. Think about that. Every hour we can be a blessing to somebody. Let me ask you a question. Last week, Monday through Friday, how many people were glad they met you? How many people were glad they met me? How many people walked away from you saying, that's a good man. That's a wonderful lady. They're Christians. I thank God for them. You know, the, you know, the Lord put you here to serve him, but he also put us here to serve one another. I look around this building. There are men in this building. There are ladies in this building. That's been a blessing to me since I've known them back in the 90s. And they continue to be a blessing to me. I'm simply saying, choose wisely. Make wise decisions. Can you imagine? Think about this. You're, you're, uh, we, we're, we're take up in the rapture. We're in heaven. We're at the judgment seat of Christ. And you're standing before the Lord Jesus. And you're giving account of your life. And he brings up something that you did that you had forgotten. And he says to you, I want to reward you for this. You see, he takes note of everything we do. By the way, it doesn't matter whether you're lost or saved. God knows everything you do. It's written down. And we'll face that in eternity. But you be a blessing to folk. That's written down. And you know what God will do? He will bless you in so many wonderful ways. Now, what I do, will it glorify God? We ought to ask ourselves these questions every morning. What I do today, will it glorify God? 
Will it hinder the life of another Christian? Will it hinder a lost man from getting saved? Will it hinder a lost woman from getting saved? You see, we need to be very careful. The Bible says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And they're getting more and more and more evil. More and more evil today. The things that used to be hidden are now out in the open. Amen? The things that were done in secret and in the night and in the dark are now right out in the open for everyone to see and for everyone to hear. And there's still a God in heaven that notes that down. And he's not going to let that go because we will answer to this God. Would it hinder another Christian from answering God's call? I could just go on and on and on. Am I willing to face what I do today at the judgment seat of Christ? Think about that. When I get up of a morning, I pray this prayer every morning. Lord, I ask that you will build a wall of protection around my family. I ask that you will keep us safe from danger, seen and unseen. And I ask that you will help us to be a blessing to some saved man or woman or lost man or woman today. I really want that for my life. I really do. Because I know the importance of decisions. Here's another question we ought to ask ourselves. Is this God's will for me? Is this God's will for me? I was standing in the pulpit at Pleasantdale Baptist Church years ago. One of our sweet young ladies, about 18 years old, came in the door a few minutes late with a young man beside her sat down, and after the service was over, while she walked up to us with that young man, and she said, Preacher, I want you to meet my new boyfriend. And I heard his name, and I talked for just a little bit, and <clears throat> he walked away and talking with someone else, and I said to her this, I said, uh, Is he a Christian? Well, Pastor, no. Is he a, does he go to church? Well, Pastor, No. Well, let me ask you this. Does he curse? Well, yeah, yes, Pastor. And I said, you better be careful. Young lady, you better be careful. But, but preacher, I love him. And I knew. I knew right there. And uh, make a long story short, she went ahead and, and, and she got married. And she got mad at me because she wanted me to marry them. And I said, I will not marry an unsaved person and a saved person. I just won't do it. I would not do it. And anyway, she got married anyway, and I'm not going to go into the gross details. But I will tell you this, it wasn't long after that that so she came to my office, walked in the door, and there were bruises on both her cheeks and on her arms. And in tears, she said, Preacher, if I just listened. Sometimes we think we are so great. We just know it all. I'll make the choices in my life. I'll make these choices. Well, better be very careful. Because you may have to live with those choices. They may not be very pleasant. Amen? And so I'm talking about this matter of opportunity and so forth. And then thirdly, time is precious. For every hour will be faced in judgment one day. Time is precious for every hour we will face in judgment someday, either as a Christian or an unsaved person. Let me hurry through this, but don't, don't miss what I'm going to say. Number one, take time to read your Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Did you see that? There's more than just reading the Bible. You've got to rightly divide it. You know what that means? It means... Hold straight. Or if you're a farmer and you, you're plowing with a horse, you want to plow a straight furrow. That's what he's saying. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing. Straight down the line, as someone has said. And so take time to read the Bible. Take time to pray. I can't emphasize that enough. The Bible says pray without ceasing. I want to encourage every member of our church, every member of our church, to continue to pray that God will get us through this. Now there's a lot of seniors that would have been here today. They would have been right here today, sitting in the pew. There were a lot of others that would have been here today had not 
concerned. And I understand that. I understand that. But you know something? There's a little bit of me that's just going to trust God. Just going to trust God. Uh, somebody said to, to me the other day, they said, uh, Preacher, how many people that you, do you know that's had this virus? And I said, none. None. We was over to the golf course the other day, and a lot of our guys were we through, I believe we were through playing golf, and someone asked that question to a couple of our guys, and they said, come to think of it, I don't know anybody. Now, I know there are, okay? But I'm just simply saying we need to be careful. We need to weigh everything. God will take care of you. Be not dismayed. God will take care of you. Amen? If you're a believer and you're in his will. Now, watch this. Take time to clean up your life. Take time to clean up your life. When I first started uh, playing with our group uh, that we, we golf with on, on Tuesday, I was riding with a, a guy that I had not ridden with before. And we got uh, up close to the green and he missed his shot and he came out with a real curse word. We got back in the cart and he looked at me and he said, uh, Forgive me, preacher. Uh, please forgive me. I, I, didn't mean to, I, I didn't mean to say that. And I just looked at him and I said, uh, I'm not the one you answer to. Just like that. I'm not the one you answer to. I'm not the one. But I appreciated his courtesy. Amen? And so clean up your life. Clean up our lives. What, what is it in my life that needs to be cleaned up? Take time to help somebody. Take time to help somebody. And then I wrote down, take time to serve God. Take time to serve God. Time is precious. Sue and I were listening to uh, Dr. Robbie Zacharias last night. They were on a um, question and answer situation. And Robbie Zacharias told this story, and I liked it, and I want to repeat it today. He said that in California years ago, when there were only trolley cars and so forth to ride and they didn't have all the, all the uh, amenities to, that we have today, <clears throat> and you rode a bus. And so this big, burl, strong man got on the bus, walked back middle ways and sat down. This young kid, uh, about 23, 24 years of age, uh, weighed about 180 pounds, sat down. And he turned to the man and he said, move over, old man. Move over, old man. And this big, burly guy moved over a little bit. And a little bit later, he moved over a little bit closer. And he said, I told you, old man, to move all the way over. And the man moved all the way over. The guy moved over again and he said, there's other people going to sit here. Squeeze on in more. Hateful. The bus stopped. The young, men got, the young man got off. The big man got off. And the boy started walking down the street. The big burly man said, son, come here a minute. Reached in his pocket and pulled out a card and said, I want you to give you my card. The young man looked at the card and he said, world boxing champion, Joe Lewis. World boxing champion, Joe Lewis. You know what he was saying silently to that young man? Young man, I could have knocked you into Bolivia any time I wanted to. I could have stomped you into Bolivia any time I wanted to. You, you mean nothing to me. But he said, I acted in courtesy and kindness. Are you following me? Do you know why God's not destroyed this earth? He could any time he wants to. Any time he created it, he could destroy it. Do you know why God has not destroyed men that hate him? It's like the uh, little ant that was on a railroad track. Another ant walked up to him and said, you better get off that track. There's a train comes down that track every day at the same time. Little old ant said, a Train? What's a train? I never heard of a train. Haven't seen a train. Haven't felt a train. You think I'm worried about a train? 
And the moral of the story is this. When that train came down the track, do you think it was terrified of that little ant? There's a little ant on the track. We've got to remember, to God, we're just ants. Now, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. He loves us. But I'm saying this. He always has been. He always will be. When there was nothing but God, and the Bible said that he's creating all of the time. And I'm saying all of that to say this. If you're here today and you're a believer, stay in his will. Get in his will and serve God. And one day he'll say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. And let's make wise decisions. But if you're here today and you do not know him, come to him. It's the greatest thing you could ever do. He wants you to spend eternity on that celestial shore where there's no sorrow, no crying, where there's joy forevermore. And it will be endless joy forevermore. Forevermore. Make decisions. We make them all the time, don't we? But they'll determine our destiny. Let's stand with heads bowed and eyes closed, if you will, please. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, our sister's going to come and play the piano in just a, or the organ in just a moment. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Our staff is going to be here. And if you're here today and you're a believer, and maybe you've not been making wise decisions, and maybe you've not been a blessing to other people, I, I don't know what it is, but the Holy Spirit has said to you today, why don't you make it right? Why don't you make it right? And our helpers will take the word of God and they'll pray with you and they'll help you in any way that we can. And if you're here today and you would like to unite with our church by letter, by statement, uh, by baptism, you come, we'd be happy to have you to join with us. And then if you're here and you've never received Christ as Savior, obviously, we would love to take the Bible and take you to a private room, show you how you can be saved and how you could know it. God wants you in heaven with him, and I want you in heaven with him. And I long for the day when all God's children are home forever and ever. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Jesse, you're going to lead us as we sing what song? And Jesse's going to lead us, you know the words, just as I am, and we'll give you an opportunity to come as Jesse leads us. The Lord speak into your heart, you come. Let him have his will and his way with you. <clears throat> Are there others, young or old? We want to help you. We want to pray for you. heads are bowed our eyes are closed there's still some folk praying we'll give them just a few moments here uh, to do business with God but every head is bowed and every eye is closed how many are here today and you can say pastor I know beyond any shadow of a doubt that I'm a Christian I know beyond any shadow of a doubt if I died today I'd go to heaven would you lift your hand please just lift it up in the air thank you so much now here's what I want to ask you to do I want to ask you to this week Pray that God will relieve us of these burdens that we're carrying concerning this virus. Ask the Lord to, as soon as he wants it done in his will, open up everything so we can go back to full bore uh, here in our church and take the gospel to the community and to the world. Now, I believe God's in it. He knows what he's doing. But I just want you as a Christian to pray that the Lord will help us to get through these very difficult, very difficult days. 
Now, if you're here today and you've never been born again, I'd be happy to talk with you. Brother Mike would be happy to talk with you, see us after the service, and we'd be glad. Now, look up this way, if you will, please. I'm so glad that you're here this morning. It's so good to see all of you, and uh, good to see some new faces today. Uh, so glad that, uh, that, that you are here. And uh, it's just so good to see Don's wife. She's such a wonderful person. I just love her to death. So sweet. Don's okay. Uh, <laughs> I said I wasn't going to do that, but it slipped. I didn't mean to, Don. I, I slipped. And Mark, it just slipped when I said what I did about you. You'll forgive me, won't you? And I won't say anything until the next time. Good to see Bob with us this morning. Bob's feeling a little better this morning, but keep him in prayer. Uh, the Lord will be with him, and he's a dear friend, and he gets his hair cut up at Don's too, don't you? Are we going to keep on going up there and taking that abuse, are we? I guess we will. All right. Let's bow for prayer, and we'll be dismissed, and let's ask the Lord to bless. Now remember, Wednesday evening we'll be here. Next Sunday at, night at uh, 1030 we'll be here, God willing, and then hopefully this thing uh, will open up for us, okay? All right. Brother Keith Kellerman, will you dismiss us in prayer, please, sir?